Okay, next thing we're going to cover is from the incident tab is the checklist. So once you click on there, go to view existing checklist. Then you want to do is make sure this is set to today's date and then find your unit that you're assigned to today. So if today I'm going to be in unit, let me pick one that's not being used. Uh, looks like 997 and then hit go. So you have two options for this unit. There is the main checklist and then a backup in case the unit goes out twice during the same 24 hour period. Uh, so all you have to do is select it. Now on your iPads, it will look a little bit different uh, since I'm on a computer, uh, the image is a little stretched out, um, but you'll have your unit number, shift, and all you're gonna do is type in on these boxes. Some of these icons that are there, if you're not sure what to put, you can click it and it'll tell you a description of what goes in the answer. Okay, all these that are red are required fields. Um, maybe you don't have a new hire, maybe you don't have a student, just go ahead and leave that blank. The main categories here are crew information. You have your unit bag that you check out every day. Uh, the driver portion of the inspection, which is compliant with the CHP inspection, the California Vehicle Code inspection. The next part of the inspection is your San Diego equipment and supply inventory, uh, which matches advantages policies on what we carry, as well as San Diego's protocols on equipment that goes on an ambulance. Then you have your BLS medication box, uh, which is new to a lot of people um, since protocols did change. Um, we now carry epi, uh, naloxone, and a glucometer, which all that is in a little box that has to be maintained within a certain temperature range. And we'll talk about that further here in a moment. Then you're going to sign the checklist to make sure that you're acknowledging that you did the checklist complete. When your shift is over, whoever started the checklist is the same person who has to sign back in to open it. You're going to come back in, check in your unit bag, and then throughout the day we have temperature logs you have to maintain as well. So we're just going to briefly go through this. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole document. That's going to be done during your ride along with your FTO. But if you want to get a heads up to see what kind of equipment we carry in the ambulance, this would be a good thing to review before you do your ride alongs. So unit bag, there's the keys, fuel card, the pager, our walkie talkie cell phones. For those, make sure you have a matching pair. Um, so if you have uh, PTT 12 and PTT 13, that's not going to work. So it should be 12A and 12B. Just pretty simple. Uh, clipboard. Make sure you do have a clipboard with actual paperwork. Should your iPad die? Should you lose connection? Should it get lost or stolen? You still have a requirement to do your documentation and we keep backup paperwork in the clipboards. So make sure you have one. Injury report and accident report. So make sure those are there in case you get hurt while on the job. Since you have to report it while on duty, you have the paperwork with you 24-7. So all you have to do is just open up the folder and answer all the appropriate questions. If you're in an accident, we'll open up that red folder and start filling out the accident report. Uh, which iPad are you assigned? Make sure you have the right iPad for each crew. If we have an issue with the software and I need to do an update, or we need to notify um, the manufacturer or send a uh, tablet back, we want to make sure we're tracking the correct one and sending back the correct one. Uh, do you have a striker gurney? If you do, make sure you have a battery. So you'll see this one's not red because not every unit has a striker gurney. So don't answer it if it doesn't apply. Just leave it blank. Your charging cables, you sign, your partner signs. So now we're on the driving inspection. Fuel level, registration, um, you have your lights in here, turn signals, make sure your windows actually work, you got windshield wipers at work, your horn and siren needs to work. The fire extinguisher, uh, the date on it is the date of inspection, so it's good from one year after that date, so don't think that it's expired. Uh, you should have two flashlights. Most of the units we've changed from regular flashlights to LED. Uh, so if you can't find them in the front of the vehicle, they're probably in the back in the basket. Okay, every unit should have a San Diego uh, 800 megahertz radio. These are portable radios. They're not uh, hard mounted into the ambulance. Uh, so just make sure you have your portable radio with you when you're in service. In case you run a medical emergency, that's how you're going to contact the emergency room and give a report. Uh, 
upholstery and make sure it's intact. Check your fluids. Transmission is not in red. Ford Transits have a sealed transmission, so you're going to leave this blank if you have a Ford Transit. Any other vehicle, yes, you will be checking the transmission fluid as well as all the other fluids. Now we're on the San Diego Equipment and Supplies. So some of these supplies are exactly as written in the San Diego Protocol. Others, we've increased the quantity because they're commonly used items. Um, so just make sure these are what you have in your unit. Nothing more, nothing less. So if I had uh, five small masks, make sure to go inside, grab another one. If you happen to have eight, please take those extra two out and put them inside because chances are somebody else is going to need them. Um, so don't overstock your unit. If you find over time that you're constantly using a certain piece of equipment and you would like to see the inventory number changed, communicate that with Ryan and we'll look at changing the uh, internal policy. We can't go below the number of uh, what San Diego requires, but yes, we are allowed to go beyond and add more. So all of these are your basic items in your unit. So I'm just gonna keep scrolling down. Oxygen. Uh, if you're a BLS unit, you should have at least 500 pounds in your main tank. That's what the M is for. If you're a CCT unit, you should have at least 1,000 pounds. And then there's a little reminder there as well. Reserve tank, if equipped, then you mark yes or no if you have it. If you don't have one, don't mark no, please. Uh, what you guys don't realize is anytime you mark something as deficient by saying no, it this software will automatically send a deficiency report to Ryan in an email documenting uh, whatever the mistake or issue is with your vehicle so we have it recorded and then we can go get it fixed. Um, so please, the things that don't apply, just leave the question blank. Uh, your gurney oxygen tank, what level is that at? Remember, it should be 500 for BLS, 1000 for CCT. And then we'll just keep scrolling. There's a lot of equipment that you guys carry. Be familiar with your equipment. Be familiar with where the equipment is stored from one model type ambulance to the next. So CHP soft restraints. Uh, CHP officers like to see that we have the old soft restraints still, still in the unit. Um, they're usually hidden away in one of the shelves or cabinets. Don't remove them. They are required. That's why it says do not use uh, because you guys will be using the neoprene um, webbing, which are the blue and the red restraints. Those are the ones that are uh, approved by EMS, but the soft restraints aren't anymore. You have a mega mover in your ambulance. It's a wonderful tool for all your uh, heavier patients, or if you have to carry somebody a good distance, makes it easier to move them. Uh, secured trash can with lid. This is a CHP and a county requirement and a Department of Health requirement. So please make sure your trash can has that strap on it, that the lid is on it, and that you have extra bags. If not, your vehicle is out of service. And notify Ryan so we can get you another trash can. So please make sure those lids are not being thrown away because there are people who have that bad habit and all you're doing is making us send you home because now your vehicle is out of service. And you're mad. Um, there should be a label on the box to make your life easier so you're not having to open these boxes up daily. Uh, so just make sure it's not expired and that it's there. Uh, your glucometer, make sure it's there, that you have your test strips, that those aren't expired, and that you have at least three Landsats. And then, of course, you sign. So at the end of your shift, here's where you turn in the bag and do the turn in uh, of all the main equipment. So throughout the shift, you're going to need to do a temperature log. So you do one at the beginning. As it says right there, inspect the temperature and medication at the start of your shift. And then all you're going to do is timestamp it, write the temperature right here. Was the temperature between 60 and 77? Because we want to know so it automatically sends that deficiency report to Ryan. So as long as it is, just click yes. If not, hit no and tell us what the temperature actually was and you know what was going on, that it got that hot. Then sometime in the afternoon or evening, depending on when your shift ends, do another inspection. So you just timestamp it, write the temperature. Was it within the right range? And then document any notes as needed. And that way we have a temperature log for 
um, all our medications. The nurses have always been doing it for years, uh, but this is a little bit new for the EMTs. So if you have any questions on doing a checklist, just shoot me an email. I'll be gladly uh, to go over it with you, answer any questions. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in the classroom. Thank you.